we are the Law and Crime Network. I'm Linda Kenny Bodden, but more importantly, we have Jesse Weber, who just came out of the courtroom in the Harvey Weinstein sexual assault trial. Jesse, were there fireworks in the courtroom this morning? What happened? Hey, Linda, there's always fireworks in the courtroom. Every day is pretty interesting. Now, today was the day that we heard from one of the Molyneux witnesses. Remember, these are witnesses who are being for brought forth to talk about that Harvey Weinstein had a pattern with women, a common scheme or plan. Remember, it's not about their conduct. He he's not facing any actual counts related to their conduct. It's ultimately to support the charges of the two main accusers. Today, we heard from a woman named Dawn Dunning. She was an aspiring actress, a dancer. She used to be a cocktail waitress at a big club down in the meatpacking industry called PM. She talked about how around in 2004, 2005, she met Weinstein at this club. They developed about an eight-month working relationship. She said it was professional other than a few inappropriate comments, but nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, she did screen tests. She was invited to events at the hands of, at the behest of Mr. Weinstein. Uh, and then it moves on to an event that happened at the Mercer Hotel in Soho. She said that she went to this hotel room, which was actually turned into a production office for one of Weinstein's films. When she got there, Weinstein led her into the bedroom and then assaulted her by putting his fingers up her skirt. Uh, it was a very emotional moment in court. She started crying a lot. Uh, not an easy moment for her to ultimately recount this detail. And then she says a few weeks later, she claims that she was invited to a restaurant hotel. Uh, and when she got there for another meeting with Harvey Weinstein about a few scripts, when she got there, his assistant, Bonnie, uh, was there and said that Weinstein is up in the hotel room. Uh, she said we should go up there. He has some business to attend to. So Bonnie takes this uh, this, uh, this witness up to the hotel room. When she arrives, Harvey Weinstein opens the door. He's wearing nothing but a bathrobe. He invites her in. There are scripts on the table, and he basically propositions her and his assistant to have a threesome with him and start screaming, screaming, and saying this is how the industry works, basically implying you have to have sex with me in order to get these parts. He even said that this is, he had mentioned names like Charlize Theron and Salma Hayek as actresses who have done this in the past. Dawn Dunning then describes how she was kind of shocked at this moment, ran out, jumped into a cab, and went home. It was a pretty uh, remarkable moment under direct examination to see this, but what we're waiting for, of course, is the cross-examination. Now, the cross today was done by Arthur Idala, and he hit on a number of different points. The first part was that he said that Dawn Dunning had done these, this entire media tour with a number of different high-profile outlets like CNN, MSNBC. She had met with the district attorney's office, and yet in all of these times that she had spoken publicly or with the district attorney's office, she only mentioned the threesome incident. She never mentioned the Soho incident, which was very alarming. It was only until later on that she first brought this incident up, which begs the question, was it true or not? He then hit the point that uh, when you talk about the Soho incident, <coughs> unlike what we've heard from other accusers who talk about Harvey Weinstein <coughs> using physical force to block or, or prevent these women from getting away, she entered the hotel room under her own uh, volition, and she could have left at any point, and she did. She was ne He never put any hands on her. No one ever chased after her. She went in a cab and went home. Uh, he, the last part of his cross-examination highlighted the fact that she might have benefited a lot from Harvey Weinstein. She was invited to all these big premieres and all these big events uh, that afterwards, after this is taken off, she still has done acting, and also the point that she's hired a lawyer, and that was being pressed that she hired a lawyer possibly to sue Harvey Weinstein. A big part of the defense is that he he was being extorted by these women. So that's what we saw from a major witness today, uh, and we're going to wait to see what happens next. Well, Jesse, let me ask you about Arthur Idala, who we know, who's a very effective trial attorney here in New York City. His partner, Imran Ansari, uh, usually appears, has appeared on the Long Crime Network a lot of time. Was he effective in cross-examining this witness on whether or not she was a willing participant in sex to play, which is what it sounds like his theme was? He has a very different style than Donna Rotuno. He uh, actually took a moment to introduce himself to the witness, said if there's any questions you don't understand, take a minute, you can answer yes or no, in this very polite, cordial, warm, welcoming tone. But yet he asked very pointed questions. He asked questions where he was trying to give the answers in the questions, tons of objections from the state, a lot of sustained objections. But he got the point out, and he was highly effective. He did a roundabout way 
We didn't know where he was going, but he made the point very clear that it seems a little too convenient for this Soho incident to be brought up so later in the day, so after the fact. And he even tried to imply for the jury to hear that she only came forward with this Soho incident after she met with a plaintiff's attorney. That's when she brought this up. Now, I, I think he made a really effective point. There were tons of objections, so he didn't quite get where he wanted to go. Uh, there were times that he went back to the defense table to figure out a roundabout way to ask the questions that he wanted. He asked it for uh, from Damon Sharonis, as well as another attorney at the table. But he had an effective style, and I think he got his point across. And the jury, what was their reaction during the time that Arthur Idalo is doing his, uh, which he described as the effective cross? Look, I have to tell you, my perspective, this jury is paying a lot of attention to everything. They were looking back and forth from Arthur Idala back to Don Dunn and constantly they're taking notes. I didn't appear see them to look at their watch, to look up, to look down, to sleep. They're listening to every moment. This is one of uh, this is one of those main witnesses you really need to hear from. So they seem to be captivated by every moment. But Linda, as you and I know very well, it's almost impossible to know what's going on in a juror's mind. Yeah. One of the things, though, you said, Jesse, that was interesting to me, you said that she mentioned the name of two other women that allegedly Harvey Weinstein told her he had sex to play with, basically. You know, you get a partner, you have sex with me, that's what the industry is doing, or that somebody else that he knew of had sex to play. That was Miss Theron and Miss Hyde. Have they come public with any allegations against either Mr. Weinstein or anyone else, as far as you know? If I recall correctly, I believe Salma Hayek had spoken out. I'm not entirely sure about Charlize Theron. What the jury was told is there are going to be big names that are mentioned during the course of this trial. No indication whether Charlize Theron or Salma Hayek will make an appearance at this court, whether they're going to be called as witnesses. I highly doubt that. But it, it, one of the big things that came out after 2017 was the concept of uh, shedding a light into the entertainment industry about what some women, and maybe men for that matter, are pressured into doing in order to get these parts. Now, that's a separate question other than rape or sexual assault, but these kinds of arrangements. And unfortunately, uh, the defense is put in the position where they have to explain these arrangements. And maybe that's something they're going to do in a closing argument where, say, where they'll say these women may not have loved the idea of having uh, sexual relations with Harvey Weinstein. Maybe they didn't really want to, but they consented to it in order to better their careers. That seems to be a common theme. It seems to be a theme that they might hit again during closing arguments. And I'll tell you this. Unlike any other trial where you can kind of get a sense maybe where the jury's going after an opening statement, that you, it's a tough, tough case for either or, I will tell you this. My personal opinion, I believe this jury has not made up their mind, that they're waiting to hear every witness and hear every argument, and as soon as they begin those deliberations, that's when they're going to have to decide. I think they're listening to everything right now. Has the cross-examination by Adal, and particularly today, put under question the prosecution's theory that perhaps uh, consent under duress can never be consent? Is that one of the areas that he seemed to be going into uh, to, uh, the, you know, waylay the prosecution arguing that in closing? Maybe not so much this witness, but what they did insinuate is that she benefited from a relationship with Harvey Weinstein over this eight-month span. Perhaps that's why she's not telling the entire truth. You know, a common theme that they say is it's very easy to say you hate Harvey Weinstein in 2020, you never were friends with Harvey Weinstein in 2020, but think, let's go back to 2004, 2005. Uh, and one of the questions about why she didn't come forward or allegedly come forward with the Soho incident immediately raises that question. But if you, ju if I were a juror and I thought, okay, I'm going to take the two incidents separately and I'll put the Soho incident aside, I'll think just about the incident uh, at the encounter at the Intercontinental Hotel for this threesome. According to her, Harvey Weinstein really wouldn't be guilty of anything. Now, would he? I mean, he didn't put his, uh, he didn't physically force her into anything, didn't put his hand on her. He propositioned her into a threesome. And I mean, at that point, we're not talking about rape or sexual assault. So there's two separate issues here. But really, the thing that they have to remember is that th this witness is being called to establish a pattern, that this is something that Harvey Weinstein has done in the past, whether it's pressuring women into sexual arrangements or actually physically touching them against their will. This is a common theme that the prosecution wants to make. But as you again, Whatever she testified to doesn't make up the charges that he's facing in that indictment. Jesse, we only have about 60 seconds or under less. Uh, two questions really quickly. What was Harvey Weinstein's reaction to this, what you described as this effective cross of this witness, uh, this Molyneux, this bad act witness? And two, uh, was Donna Rotunu at the table next to Arthur Ardala when uh, Ardala sits down? What's the positioning? 
Don Rotuno was there. She was listening as well as Harvey Weinstein. He seems to be very actively involved in his defense when Arthur Idala would come to the defense table and ask his uh, fellow colleagues about this line of questioning. You could see Harvey Weinstein uh, possibly providing some comments about some advice about where to go next. He's actively involved in this. He's listening intently. And this is just another example of how he's been behaving throughout this trial. Well, Jesse, so much to talk about. I know we could talk another half an hour, but you have to have some lunch and get back into that courtroom. Uh, thank you so much for being Law and Crime's eyes and ears, because as a trained trial attorney, you know what's happening in that courtroom and can really feed it to us as if we have the front row seat there. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Linda. Thanks again. And now, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody else and everyone in the world, everybody watching, we have to take a quick break. We'll be right back.